So I don't know if you remember this, but recently you provided us with some pictures of yourself of when you were younger. Oh no! <laughs> oh yes. Here's the first photo you provided. Oh my goodness. I think I was 12. We lived in a small town, uh, in a rural town. So there were always chores to do. Plummerville, Arkansas. It's about 50 miles south of Little Rock. So it wasn't even a thousand people in population. Ah, <laughs> I was eight years old. I was in the third grade. And my mother used to set my hair in pin curls. We lived at this time in a house. It was at the edge of the vineyards in Ontario, abandoned vineyards, and which is now all the Ontario International Airport. But anyway, we'd play hide and seek in there, and it was a spooky place, and I remember racing bikes. I think I was 12 in this, because I was in the Boy Scouts. You won't believe what troop I was in. You know, when you're in the Boy Scouts, you're in troop number such and such. Do you know about that? I was in troop 69. I was in the Beaver Patrol, troop 69. Never thought about it until years later, and I remember what, what, I was trying to impress a girl in college or something. Hey, baby, I was in the Beaver, I was, a, I was in the troop 69, Beaver Patrol. Get out of here, you know. It was a carefree and wonderful existence. So I am uh, 17, and I'm in a class of 21 graduates. So it was a small town, a small school. I had a good time in high school. I was voted uh, to be uh, the most popular and most likely to be successful by my high school peers, yeah. <laughs> and here I am on Eldest React. <laughs> That's my high school graduation photo. My favorite thing about high school is I competed in forensics and speech, and I did pretty well in that. And, uh, you know, proms, and I married my high school sweetheart. In those days, you married young mostly, a lot of people did. Things were different then. You expected to be a mother, and a how, you know, a wife and a mother. I was a graduation from high school when I was. 17, I graduated from high school very young. I graduated from high school in 1958. Things were totally different then. You had the draft also coming up in a few years, so you had to go to school. So basically I was hoping to be successful and find out what I really should do by going to college. I uh, had moved to Washington, D.C. and was working, and I uh, started singing. I made my singing debut uh, at the LaFont Plaza Hotel in Washington, D.C., in a little lounge called the Apple of Eve. I joined a Cuban jazz combo called the Al Martinez Jazz Combo. And uh, that's how I made my singing debut in Washington, D.C. Gee, I'm going down memory lane, and it feels good, too, to talk about it. I went into radio at one point, and this was out in San Bernardino. They wanted us to do a challenge, the two DJs and me. I was the news, news person. So the people who, who owned this car said, look, we're going to train you how to race. So I raced around that oval a lot and I figured out how, how you accelerate, how you make the turn, how you do this and that. I did pretty darn good. There it is, there's my college uh, swim team and a couple of my buddies. I wonder if they're still alive. I, I haven't seen them for 50 or 60 years. That's Ira Gruber on the left and Jack Goldsmith in the middle. I was a distance swimmer. I don't know if you know what that means, but I swam the 1500 meters. I was actually in a rock and roll band on the weekends. So I'd swim, we'd go to swim meets, come back on Saturday nights, so I'd I was in a rock and roll band. That's one of the ways I paid my way through college. Phil Painter and the Knockabouts. You've probably heard of them. Where I left the Al Martinez Jazz Combo and I started my own jazz and blues band called the Ruby Hayes Jazz and Blues Band and performed all around Washington, D.C., New York, Florida. And this photo here was taken in San Diego where I was a headliner at the Adams Avenue Street Fair Festival. There was a point in there where I got married and got divorced and became a single parent, and I put my career on hold to, uh, uh, for family matters and for about 15 years. Then I returned to my singing career, took out an equity loan, and went into the studio and made my first album. This is of me as a teacher. I taught middle school and high school history. If you care about the kids, if you're willing to do the work, the size of the class isn't what matters, it's the caring that matters. And we had a good time, you know. 
I'm very proud of the work I did. I'm marching off to Vietnam on the last day of boot camp. I was in the Navy in Vietnam. So I was on a ship off the coast of Vietnam going back and forth, stopping people and shooting things and stuff. They found out I could swim. So I was the guy that would go in the water if any planes crashed to get the pilots out. I was in the Navy six years, but two years on active duty. And it's something that's, I did because I thought that's what you had to do, you know. You were kind of a, an automaton in those days. You did what you were supposed to do. You went to school, you went to college, you went in the service, you got a job, your wife, you had kids. I did all that. I didn't talk about this for 30 years. I'm surprised I'm talking about it now. It becomes easier and easier over time to capture moments from your life. What is it like for you to come from a time where photography wasn't as easily accessible to now being able to capture every little piece of your life and have your opinions heard on the show? It's super interesting. It's like there's no area of your life that isn't, um, you know, sort of recorded somewhere. Uh, and it's just a very different, a very more sort of in a fishbowl kind of life now than it, than it ever was. Things are just more accurate and more uh, more open, everybody knows about them, and I think it's better. For independent artists, these are all the tools we need. You know, photography, videos, it's, it, it seems like that evolved right along with the new movement of the independent artists. Someone miles away in other countries can find you and can invite you to come and do a very exciting, exotic gig somewhere. That's just one aspect of the differences what, of me growing up and today, absolutely. Communication, phone, pictures. Pictures were uh, very hard to, you know, it wasn't that easy. You had to pretty well set it up. You know, I really had a great childhood and I grew up in a great time. I'm looking forward to a terrific next 10 or 15 years. You gotta keep busy, gotta have people to love, and I have, th have to look th things to look forward to. Those are my, that's my philosophy now.